Are they talking about the fall of Rome, or what exactly are they telling it to? He was talking about Octavius and Caesar, and 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 uh, who was governing, and the amount of violence, and um, he was trying to make some comparisons. Um, if you like, I could actually pull up the story. I, I can play an ad and, and pull it up. It, it, it's actually kind of amusing in a way. Yeah, one of yeah those... sure. Okay, let's do that. Okay, we're back here. Uh, that was uh, Casper Fly, and it's all the same. I'll play a couple of ads, and we'll be right back with the Yale Osowski we're sitting in with the host of Liberty in Exile. Okay, this is 1690 on your AM dial, Cordy's Underground Radio. Here we go. 1690 on that AM dial, far to the right on that dial, far to the left in your hearts. <laughs> I made you laugh, eh? Okay. So I, I actually couldn't f- come up with it. Um, there, when, I, when I go through the uh, MMFA's um, long list of stuff, I did come up with um, something on... Um, on Octavian, and we'd have to sit and listen to him. Mm-hmm. Which uh, I, I found the article, I guess. Uh, Beck points to the beginning of the Roman Empire as an example of what's happening to us. Oh, okay. There you go. Thanks. It's a historians dismantle Beck's Roman history lesson. Now, uh, I, I've been a fan of Rome for a while. I've, uh, of course, uh, history is one of my minors here at school. Uh, I took great interest in the Roman Empire, and now the, the mistake that Glenn Beck makes is he's basically saying here that. Well, the whole mistake is why uh, is because Octavian and uh, the leaders started land grabs and food rations and free food. That's that's one of his claims, which is entirely stupid. It, it really is. One of the greatest reasons why the Roman Empire fell was that the army, the military, had so much power. They were conquering half the known world at the time, and they just expected more and more and more. More in wages, more booty, more land, whatever it may be. So these people were practically running the empire. And this is after Octavian had become Augustus. Now, Augustus was the first emperor of what we now call the, the Roman Empire. That was in uh, 19 BC, the first triumvirate. And you had, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking at this Glenn Beck article. Of course, maybe you, you've studied a little more than I have. But he's talking about how Octavian rose to emperor without violence and, and ma- turned it into an empire. But, of course, there was massive civil war going on at the time. And Octavian was was battling Mark Antony for power. He had banished Antony to uh, to Egypt at that point. I mean, there's revisionist he- history right here, which I, most of the time I'd say is an okay thing to do if you put it in the right context and you deviate from the main history books that sell you lies. But when you're just creating your own history so it fits your own little ideology, terrible thing to do. Yeah, I quite agree. Yeah, the whole business of, of claiming that there was no violence going on at the time was absurd. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was massive violence. Very true. One of my favorite philosophers, Cicero, was murdered right there by Octavian because he, or at that point, he was Augustus because he didn't support his takeover. And as far as freedom goes, there wasn't a lot of real freedom for the average citizen of Rome. Oh, no, there was freedom for the senators, for the elites, for those in power, but the rest of them, no, not at all. There was not really a criminal justice system. The Basically, the army kind of rolled around. If you did anything, your tongue was cut out or your kill right there in the street. I mean, pretty violent, <laughs> repressive society. <laughs> but this is what Glenn Beck wants to see. Uh... Revisionist history. Yeah. So, well, this is what's happened. This is, this is why a lot of the debates, though, that take place are so absurd because they're – there's no context. There's no. There are no actual reference points that anyone agrees upon anymore. Mm-hmm. And so, it's two people. It's or it's rather essentially two sides talking at each other, and no one's hearing anything the other side is saying. And you know, there's a lot of fact-free discussions mm-hmm. taking place on 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 the media, on that TV, where you accept, reject, accept, reject. Mm-hmm. Um, very true. I mean, we come from people are now brought up to have extremely different worldviews. They see the world in completely different ways. If you have one event going, I mean, that's why we have thousands of radio stations, thousands of shows. There's one event that happens and there's 37,000 interpretations that people have. It's just different worldviews, but some of them are based on adequate study and research. Some some of them are just based on claims that someone else made, and you just accept what the guy says on the TV or on the radio and go off with that. That's your talking point. Yeah, and it's 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 unacceptable. 
It really is. I get to the point, I get frustrated because really all I want from my, li- I just want them to vote. I want them to know what, like, like that's all I want. I want them to vote. I want them to know what they're voting about. I want them to be informed. Don't want them to knock on people's doors or, or even to give money. I just want them to know what it is they're voting for. That's it. Just be informed. And it's really so easy as long as the, the web is this accessible. There's no excuse, you know, to go to a place, to an echo chamber, to listen to people say things that you already believe because that makes you feel warm and fuzzy. Mm. It's, it's absurd. Very true. I th- uh, what's his name? Eric uh, Bana, something like that. He was the, the Democratic congressman who became the darling of the right-wing media and Glenn Beck and, and such because he uh, had voted against the health care plan and apparently Rahm Emanuel came to him and threatened him to vote. But he said, he made the point that his entire first term, all he was doing was raising money and on the phone constantly begging and begging. He never read the bills. No one did. And then that's why the, the Eric Schmidt from Google a few weeks ago came out and said, you know, it's pretty much known that lobbyists write most of the bills out there. Yeah, it's just people just take it and accept it and like, cool, yeah, all right. Other guys are just usurping democracy and writing their own laws. Cool, we're down with it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, now that's a particular problem of the American political system where members of the House of Reps are elected for only two years, so they never get out of campaign mode. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a bit difficult. I mean, if if you're a senator, you have six years to raise money and kind of you yeah. know, make your way. But as a member of the House of Reps, it's absurd. No, very true. I mean, a lot of them, and those who are more independent in the House of Representatives, and they are few, they're the ones who are independently wealthy or ones that have amassed some sort of popularity that you know they can pretty much do whatever they want. Charlie Rangel has been he's been elected twenty times now. Almost 40 years. And the guy was staying in hotels here, not paying for this, not paying rent on this apartment, staying here. I mean, you can basically do whatever you want once the people have this accepted vision of you and they like you. And I mean, that's the problem with politics now is we need the truth. We need alternative media. We need voices like yours, like mine, people just talking and, and just seeing what we see and just destroying the filter that is the corporate media that goes on and just propagates this worldview that just favors those who are already in power. Yeah, and there was a study we were talking about earlier this morning that people respond emotionally first, and they're incapable of doing anything else. So like you say, they accept Charlie Rangel, and they have this view of him, and he's extremely corrupt. I mean, ridiculously corrupt, absurdly corrupt. And he got elected, I think, I think he got 80% of the vote, or it was, it was insane. Mm. You know, it made no sense. And yet all these charges were out there, and they, they weren't just charges. They weren't just, like, accusations. There was, you know, there was actual proof and pictures. <laughs> there was an hysterical picture of lo- him lolling around a pool. Um, um, Passed out in his deck chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But people make these decisions emotionally first, and, um, um, and that's, that's why they're so good at selling us stuff, because they reach us emotionally the uh, um, the media uh, do first. They hit us where we live, and people respond, and then then they make their decisions, and then they start justifying how they feel and so forth, rather than figuring out what it's the, the issue is about, and then you know, mm. and then maybe uh, um, I don't know. It's just it's strange. But the study said that people can't react any other way. It's the lizard brain, fight or flight. Oh God. Okay, listen, listen. Have a great show. And uh, thanks for sitting in. We appreciate it a lot. I want to thank you all for listening here at New Media and Politics. We're here Monday to Friday, 8 to 10. 